بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so let's move on with a different uh, probability distribution example like in the previous example we have seen the configuration of rip to ehrp so what i'll do is now i'm going to remove the ehrp and replace this part with osp okay so if you go back to our configurations i already have the routing configured based on the previous lab so what i'll do is i'll quickly remove the ehrp so in the previous example i have configured the ehrp let's remove that i'm not going to disturb the rip i'll only remove the ehrp because i want to replace that with ospf so that i can also uh, go ahead with one example to understand how the redistribution is done with ospf uh, RIP, I'm not going to disturb. Let's leave it the RIP on the router one and two the same. So I'm not going to disturb that. If you want to quickly verify the configuration, we do have an RIP configuration already on the router one, advertising 10 and 11. And on the router two, if I just use show run section router, to verify the routing configurations, we do have an RIP already running here. So once you remove the EHRP, automatically the redistribution command is also removed. Now we'll go to router 3 and we'll quickly configure the OSPF on this side. So I'm running 3.subnet. Again, the prerequisite I already knew, uh, expect you to know the basic routing concepts of OSPF and EHRP. Of course, RIP as well. Advertising the 3.subnet and then 2.subnet, which is on the WAN. And for the sake of verification, we can also advertise the loopback interface of the router three, just for the just for having additional networks, because one one route it will be very simple. You know, I don't want that way. Let's make it uh, additional routes. So the next thing on the router two as well, I'm going to advertise the two dot subnet, which is connecting between the routers two. That should be in area zero. And also I'm advertising the 12 dot subnet. 12 dot subnet also I'll advertise here. So I don't have them uh, here. Basically, I don't have these routes here. So you can say like this is my uh, topology. I'm going to advertise the 12 dot loopbacks here uh, inside the what's the protocol I'm using. I'm using OSPF here, not so I'm going to remove the EHRP and reconfigure this with OSPF. I think I have used a different topology here. So let me copy a different topology. So I'm going to run between RIP to OSPF, right? That's my topology. So I'm going to advertise the 12 dot loopbacks here, and I'm going to advertise the 13 dot loopbacks here, and I'm going to advertise the 11 dot loopbacks here, just to make it uh, bigger. So to start with, we'll, we did already this part. So this is my topology. So let's go back and start the configuration. So if you go to router two now, the router two will be getting the routes. If I say show IP route, uh, exclude connected. So here you can see there are some specific routes. Now the router two is uh, learning the route from the RIP. And the router two is also learning the routes from OSPO because this is my ASBR. So, which means in this case, okay, so this is my ASBR. So, I'm going to configure this as an ASBR here. So, ASBR will be having both the routes here. Now, what I want is, I want to make sure that uh, we will be getting the routes on both the sides. So, by default, the router 3, you will not get the routes on the router 3 here. If we go back to the router three here, if I say show IP route OSPF, we don't see any routes here. So let's quickly go ahead and configure the redistribution. So let's go back with this topology here. So the first thing I want to redistribute uh, into RIP, you can do either way, any order, it's up to you. As we already know how to do it into the RIP, so I'll start with this into RIP. So already we know the protocol, the configuration as well. We need to go to router two. The direction is into RIP. So we say router RIP onto the router RIP. And then we say redistribute. What is the source protocol? OSPF. 
So also we need to tell what is the process ID. The process ID is one. And also we need to define the metric because again, the metric should be given in terms of half counts. I'm just giving one. Now, once you do this, we should see these routes will be learned on the router one as an RIP route if everything is okay. So which means I need to go to router one and I say show IP route RIP. So I'm able to see those 30 dot routes coming from the router three as well as 30 dot route as well as 20, 12, you know, these are all running in RIP. The 12 is a loopback of the router two, 13 is a loopback of the router three. So I did not add them here, but actually I'm using them in, in my topology. Now, likewise, we have to, we also need to configure the redistribution of RIP to OSPF. So, which means we have to configure RIP into OSPF here. Okay. So let's go to the router two, and we'll start the configuration of RIP into OSPF here. So let's go to router two. We'll go to config mode. We'll say router OSPF one. And then redistribute the protocol. The source protocol is RIP here. And now here, again, the question comes with a metric because now, as you can see, in OSPF, there are a few additional options we need to understand. So the first option is we have a keyword called subnets. Let's start with this. Now the subnets keyword will ensure that it's going to redistribute all your uh, subnets, which means your classless subnets. And in OSPF, if I don't give the subnets, let's say in this case here, you can see when I when I say redistribute RIP and then just press enter, you can see only the classful networks will get redistributed. So nowadays we use all classless. So we also want to redistribute the class less networks. So in that case, we, need, we must use the keyword called subnets. So this is mandatory. Now you can see here, uh, this, there are a few differences in different protocols. That's the, that's the thing you need to understand because while you're doing the configurations, the behaviors will be different. And there are a few uh, specific set of commands will vary in different protocols. Now, once you do this, now these uh, option, these are optional. So I'm not going giving this command. Let's quickly verify this first which means if I go to router three, if I say show IP route OSPF, we should see the routes. As you can see, I will be able to see the O routes. O routes are nothing but your internal routes coming from the same protocol. So these are my O routes. We know these O routes coming from the same protocol. In OSPF, we also have an OIA coming from a different area, but still these two referred as internal routes. So the internal routes either will be either O or OIA. So if the routes are coming from the same area, then we call it as O routes. And if the routes are coming from a different area, then we call them as OIA. But whereas you also have an external routes in OSPF, now the external routes will be either OE1 or OE2. So again, in OSPF, there are two types of external routes. So the default one is OE2. So let's see the default values first. As you can see, this OE2 is a default, which means if I don't tell the route type, the default will be OE2. And if I don't give the metric, so the default metric will be 20. As you can see, the metric value is already copied. So the metric value will be 20. So in OSPF, you have a default metric of 20 for all the external routes. So which means in OSPF, you don't need to define the metric. Metric is optional. And if you don't define the metric, the default metric, it will take 20. And the default metric type, it takes E2. Again, I'll explain uh, what is E1 and E2. The difference between them also will verify. Now, let's say if I don't want to use the metric of 20, I don't want to use the default. I want to give some metric, let's say 1000 or 1500 or let's say 120, whatever the number. This is actually the direct cost. So we can manually define the metric. So if you don't want to use 20, the default, it takes 20. That's good. And let's say due to some reason, you don't want to use 20, you want to use 120 or 130 or whatever the number, we can manually define. So whenever I change the metric, you can see the metric changes here. So the metric will automatically change. So in OSPF, the met subnet is mandatory in order to support your classless. 
And the metric is optional, but the default, it will take 20. If you want to use other than 20, we need to manually define. And then there is a metric type E1. The default, it takes E2, but we can change to E1. So let's first try to understand the difference between E1 and E2 and preferable to change to E1. But let's try to understand first, what is the difference? The difference is simple here. So OE2 is the default one, which it takes. Let's say we have some RAP or EHRP or BGP, some other protocol. And we are trying to redistribute the routes and we got some OSPF here. And let's say I'm doing a redistribution on the router A, which is running both the protocols. So which means here you can see the routes will be exchanged. So when the routes are being exchanged, it will also exchange the metric type. Of course, the metric value also it will exchange. So the metric value will be differing. Let's say at the time of redistribution, I'm giving the metric of 100. Let's say at the time of redistribution, I'm, I'm saying the route from EHRP into OSPF should get into this and the metric should start with 100. So in the case of OE1, first we'll understand E1, E2 becomes easy automatically. So when it reaches the router B, so you have the cost of 10 here. Let's say the cost of A to B link is 10. So when it B, when it goes to router B, it will become 110. Let me write here 110. And when it goes to router C, it will add this value. What is that? 110 plus 30, it becomes 140. And when it goes to next router, it adds this 20. So 140 plus 20, it becomes 160. And then 160 plus, this is E1. So the difference between the E1, what it will do is whenever you choose E1, it is going to automatically add the individual cost values on the transit path. And the metric value will automatically increment depending upon the cost values on the transit interface. So which means the same thing, if you try to see the same uh, uh, here, the same thing, what I just showed you. So this is E1. So the preferable is E1. But again, why E2 is not preferable? What is exactly E2? Now E2, let's say at the time of redistribution, if I give the metric value of 100, it will be 100 all the time. So it will not change. As you can see, it will not change. It will remain the same. So it's going to be at the time of redistribution, I'm giving 100. Same time, it will be 100. It will be 100, it will be 100, it will be 100 all the time, which means it will not change the values. So the metric values will not change, uh, which basically means that the metric, whatever you give at the time of redistribution, it remains the same, uh, which is the default. And most of the time you really do not want this because most of the time you, you don't want like, on the router A, I'm doing redistribution and the metric is 100. And after crossing 20, 30 routers, still the same metric 100. That's really not good because the metric has to increment based on the individual path cost. So the preferable is always E1. And that's the reason uh, it's always recommended to change to E1. Uh, let's quickly verify this E1 and E2 here in my topology. If I just go back to my topology, and I'll try to verify the same in our case. So if I go to router 3, I'm giving the metric of E2. So I'll go to router 2 and I'll change the metric type to 1. So when I change to metric type 1, and I'm giving the metric of 120, and I'm changing it to 1. So if I go to router 3 now, check the output before. Before it was 120, the same, and the metric type was E2. So now what we'll do is we'll, we'll say show IP route OSPF. Now you'll see the metric value changes to E1. That's the first thing because we have given this command, metric type E1. And you can see the cost value also changes here. You can see the cost value is 184 here, uh, which basically means that at the time of redistribution, it's 120. And this link, the cost is 64. You can see 120 plus 64, it becomes 184. So which means when it reaches here, it will be 184. Of course, for 
when it reaches the next router, if it is 64, then it will add 64. If it is 10, it will add 10 like that. It will go on adding. And even you can see the 12 dot network, the 12 dot network, the cost is coming here. 12 dot networks are here. You don't see in the diagram, but I have used here. And these loop bags will have the cost of one. And when it reaches here, it will become 64 plus one, it becomes 65. So as you can see, the cost will increment, but whereas before the cost will not increment. If you see before, I think 12 dot, uh, it's actually internal route, 12 dot is not external route, sorry, it's not the external route, but again, uh, for uh, in, for normal internal route, it will anyway, it will increment automatically. But for external routes, you need to increment manually by giving this metric type one. If I miss this command, the default will be metric type two, which means the cost remains the same, even though you cross multiple routers. So this example quickly uh, summarizes, in case if you are using OSPF protocol, then how the redistribution is done. Of course, also we have seen how to do it inside the RIP, but any other protocol, the same thing. It means even if you are using a BGP to OSPF or uh, then just we just change the PGP AS number. And if I'm using EHRP, then basically you just change the EHRP with AS number, whatever you run. So the, the, the options will change what you specify here. It totally depends on which protocol you're running here. The rest of the options remains the same because whenever you do redistribution into OSPF, then uh, this is how you have to do. So these are the options you need to keep in mind.